Surgeons of Reddit, what was the biggest mistake you made while operating on a patient? Story 1. Not a surgeon, but I am a histotech. We work in the pathology lab where all the specimens were sent. A surgeon did a double mastectomy based off a different hospital system's pathology report. Basically, the report said she had the kind of breast cancer where both breasts needed to be removed. But we found zero cancer in either breast. He was crapping bricks, so we submitted both breasts in their entirety. That's a ton of blocks, and it's unheard of to submit all the tissue like this, but he needed to find cancer. I've never seen a surgeon stand there and watch the pathologist like this guy did. We all felt so bad for him, and of course the patient. He was so upset, cussing up a storm the whole time and screaming about, This is why I never take outside pathology reports. Turns out the other lab had mislabeled her specimen, so some other lady got the all clear who had cancer and she lost both breasts when she didn't. All around a horrible situation and the surgeon was sick over it all. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. Malpractice stories can be tough. I'll lighten the mood a bit. Was doing varicose vein surgery on a very posh middle-aged lady. Very cut class accent. There was an anesthetic that we used that sometimes induced some hallucinations either going under or coming out of anesthesia and heard some funny things. Anyway, this lady was in recovery just coming out of anesthetic. The team were around waiting for her to wake up and gag a little on the tube in her throat for breathing so we knew it was time to remove it. She gagged, we removed the tube, she smacked her lips and said loudly in her incredible accent, That's the best bit of dong I've had in years. The whole recovery room just fell about laughing. Luckily, she didn't remember it. Story 3. Med student here. I was watching a knee operation when the surgeon suddenly stopped, looked towards the staff absolutely shocked and asks, This is the wrong knee, isn't it? Basically, he was told to operate the wrong knee and halfway through he realized it was too good looking to be the knee that needed the operation. Luckily, there was no permanent damage done. The team re-knit everything together and rescheduled the surgery. Story 4. Not the surgeon, and I'm sure not even his biggest mistake, but this was one of the more bizarre things I've witnessed in an OR. Surgeon brought a bad pair of glasses. So here we are, total hip replacement. Surgeon is going to town with what I lovingly call the human grater, which is a doohickey to make sure the new hip socket will fit in. Just picture a cheese grater wrapped around a golf ball on the end of a power drill. It's, uh, not pleasant. Anyway, dude is grinding away at the feller's hip and suddenly yelps in surprise and stops, backing quickly away from the table. We're all like, what? His glasses spontaneously broke in half. They were the type that didn't have rims, just lenses with a bar across the nose and bars for the ears. So the metal crossing the nose snapped at the screw. Surgeon quickly starts stripping off his gown, etc. Had the full face shield get up, ortho ORs are, uh, splashy, and leaves the room. Comes back with a roll of tape. Him and the circulating nurse can't get them fixed, so he just holds them to his face and has her run the tape around his head a few times. Then he suits back up again and goes back to acting like nothing happened. All in all, added like 10 minutes to surgery time, at least that I could catch directly. Hadn't been with that surgeon before, but I can't imagine that was his best performance afterwards. Seeing as how his glasses were taped across his eyes at weird angles. But uh, yeah, don't buy $5 readers for the OR. Story 5. Not a surgeon, but I had a screw put in me to hold a fracture in my wrist. At the last moment before surgery, the anesthetist told me I could have the surgery with a local rather than a general anesthetic as planned. So I let her make the call for me to be awake. During the drilling, my surgeon started complaining at length of why he hates the drill he's using and how it's inferior to the other type or brand. It was apparently the only one he could find at the time and he didn't want to reschedule. Once the screw is in, the surgeon says to close up. Someone asked if the screw should protrude as much as it was, to which he responded, No, but we can get away with it, and you never want to take a screw out and put another in, as you essentially wear the thread of the bone. Then, silence for about 10 seconds while I feel them shifting wrist around, followed by, Actually, we better put a smaller screw in. When I was in recovery, the surgeon was surprised how quickly I woke up and had a slight look of surprise when I told him I was only under local. Next thing he said was, Surgery went well. Story 6. Veterinarian here. We do quite a few surgeries, so I hope this counts as a real response. Mistakes likely happen all the time. From nicked blood vessels to skin slash organ tears, most are probably fairly minor. In the veterinary world, I've certainly heard stories of male animals having an abdominal incision during a neuter since someone thought it was a female for a spay. Wrong limbs can be amputated, surgical instruments and sponges slash gauze can be forgotten in patients. There are many pre- and intrasurgical checklists to help prevent these, and I'm sure it's even more developed in human medicine. Fortunately for me, the biggest surgical mistake is probably a suture slipping when removing an organ resulting in minor internal bleeding. Fairly easy to find the bleeder and get things stopped rather quickly. 
or having a small bone break when repairing another fracture. Things happen, we address it, and learn from it for all future patients. Story 7. My mother's surgeon says, Well, not doing basic math correctly and sewing up a woman having spine surgery with two sponges still inside of her. My mom was 20 years sober, so she refused most of the pain meds. When they had to confess they screwed up, she had a mental breakdown facing all that pain again. She got a lawyer and they settled ASAP, about 50000 Mom thought it was fair, but my godfather is a retired federal prosecutor and said it would have been 100000 easy with a different attorney. Story 8. Not a surgeon, but I can tell you of one. My mother-in-law had a bad fall while on vacation in Florida and had to have hip surgery. During the surgery, they nicked her bowels without realizing it, until almost two days later when she started complaining of abdomen pain and her blood pressure started dropping. By then, she was already septic, went into a coma, and they couldn't save her. The hospital declared her death natural causes. We only know otherwise because my husband's family hired someone to do an autopsy before they cremated her body. Story 9. I'm not a surgeon, but an OR nurse. We were doing a quick APR for a patient with rectal cancer. Quick summary, you remove the rectum slash anus, close the anus, and the patient has a colostomy for the rest of their life. This procedure was done robotically. The rectum was removed slash detached and wasn't immediately removed, not uncommon. I went to lunch and when I came back, noticed the lack of specimens on my table. The patient was already closed and minutes away from being extubated. The surgeon had to return to the OR, reopen the patient, and remove the specimen. Big deal, but... Luckily, no real harm to the patient. Story 10. This one isn't a personal case, but a case that I read and stuck with me. So a surgeon amputated the healthy leg of a 52-year-old instead of the other diseased leg. He was already cutting the wrong leg when a nurse looked through the patient's file and stopped, informing him that he had been working on the wrong leg. Apparently, the surgeon denied responsibility for the error and shifted it to the other staff members involved in the surgery, since the blackboard in the operating room, the operating room schedule, and the hospital computer all listed the wrong leg for amputation. Also, the wrong leg had also been prepared for surgery prior to the doctor's arrival. The surgeon added that he didn't realize that he was cutting the wrong leg because it was also diseased and might have needed to be removed in the future. Story 11. A long time ago, I worked for a law office as an administrative assistant. The office represented doctors who were going in front of a medical board to defend their licenses when they were accused of violating medical conduct. There were surgeons who routinely left items in their patients over and over again and kept getting off. A doc was forging paperwork for parents to show that they provided services to their kids when they were never provided, which caused an outbreak of disease and resulted in innocent people dying. There were also doctors who were using their medical knowledge to poison family members. I obviously can't go into any detail, but that was terrifying. Most of them kept their licenses and faced no recourse besides losing a little money in a malpractice suit and getting their malpractice insurance raised and occasionally paying a fine to keep their license. There are a lot of good doctors out there. These were not them. Scary outcomes. Story 12. You're not going to get a lot of answers on this for a number of reasons, but I can tell you what you aren't being told. 1. Wrong surgery site. 2. Ill-positioned patient that causes complications. 3. Excessive bleeding due to surgical complications. Example, crap, I cut the big red slash big blue. 4. Wrong products being used on the patient due to similar names or unfamiliarity. 5. Putting implants where they do not belong. 6. Contaminating the sterile field, causing increased risk of infection. And 7. Poor surgical planning. Example, the patient really is not a surgical candidate, or the operation will most likely have only marginal clinical benefits. Story 13. 13 years in practice as a surgeon. So far, myself, I haven't had any major operation screw-ups. However, everyone who's a surgeon gets their training at some kind of academic medical center. The mentors at these places tend to be one of two varieties. Type 1, the highly competent role models, and type 2, surgeons just barely competent enough to stay in practice, but with their mistakes frequently reviewed publicly for educational purposes by the trainees who also work at the same facility, so they can call those of type 1 for rescue help during the operation. By far, the most common mistake made by type 2 surgeons is doing operations in patients that were beyond hope of recovery. This frequently results in suffering for everyone involved and many times a more expeditious death for the patient with a terminal illness. A good example would be attempting to resect large, unresectable metastatic cancers wrapped around sensitive vital structures. Some type 2 surgeons make careless mistakes, like how I watched a vascular surgeon that forgot to reverse the vein graft when doing a bypass so that all the valves are pointed the wrong way and the graft doesn't even flow. I also once saw a cancer surgeon use the ultrasonic dissector to accidentally divide the external iliac artery. Have heard about inadvertent vascular injuries to the iliac vein and aorta. All but the last of those were identified and corrected with the patient suffering no adverse consequences. 
Lots of times, bowel injuries are missed and the patient has to go back to surgery for a resection or repair. That's super common because the bowel is pretty thin and fragile and partial thickness tears can break down in unhealthy patients with a lot of previous surgery and lots of adhesions. Even great surgeons get leaks once in a while for all kinds of reasons. But most commonly overconfidence in a really sick patient's ability to heal a technically proficient surgery. Sometimes timing an operation or part thereof is the most critical thing. Having good enough blood pressure, heart rate, oxygenation, and nutrition are just, if not more important, for some types of surgery where functional organs are reconstructed rather than just being removed. There are some common sayings among surgeons, and one of those is, it takes five years to learn how to operate, ten years to learn when to operate, and a lifetime to learn when not to operate. Story 14. Surgery resident here. For the non-medical people, a doctor who's in the middle of a five to eight year surgery training after med school. This isn't my mistake, I was not scrubbed in this case, but a mistake of a mentor of mine who I consider one of the best surgeons in terms of technique, warm bedside manner, and as a teacher. A healthy young patient with acute appendicitis, booked for a laparoscopic appendectomy. This is a minimal invasive operation commonly performed every day for removing the appendix through three small 1-2 to two centimeter incisions. The incisions are followed by placing special ports through them to allow laparoscopic instruments to go into your belly. Before placing the ports, we inflate your belly with CO2 like a balloon to make space for the trocar ports. Each of these trocar slash special ports have a pointy javelin looking thing so it can enter the abdomen. The first one goes around your belly button, the second goes somewhere below the belly button a few centimeters, and the third one goes somewhere on your left side of your belly. In my mentor's case, the first port went in smooth, but upon placement of the second port, the trocar, the javelin looking thing, went through and through the crotch of the common iliac artery, and also into the left iliac vein underneath it. Vascular surgery was called in emergently. The abdomen was opened up the old-fashioned way via laparotomy, vertical incision, middle of the belly, and vascular team tried to repair the injury. The patient coded from massive blood loss and eventually died after many hours of CPR, resuscitation, and transfusion. The loss affected everyone in the surgery department, not just my mentor. It was devastating. Story 15. Not a surgeon, but a few years ago, my mom had a major stroke, which left her on a permanent feeding tube placed in her abdomen for about three months of her recovery. I will say she got the absolute best care other than this incident, and she had a miraculous recovery to quote the doctors. When she had the feeding tube removed from her abdomen, we weren't worried, because it's a fairly simple procedure from what we were told. Then my dad goes to change the bandage when the time comes, and what else does he find but a string sticking out of my mother's incision. So he called the doctors, thinking that probably wasn't right and the doctors very quickly got her back in to remove the pieces they left in her. My dad taped the string to a sticky note and hung it in the kitchen. He said he'd file a lawsuit, but nothing yet. I think he's glad she's still alive, and he's just tired from all we'd been through. Story 16. Not surgery, but EM. Perhaps it's less shocking because we have a more chaotic environment, but I've lots of stories. Many years ago, trying to straighten out some fractured forearm bones, I managed to dislocate the wrist. The patient was very likely headed to surgery anyway, but I tried so hard that I uh, made it worse. I've also given activated charcoal to an overdose patient that then progressed to needing intubation, much more difficult to do when everything in the back of the throat is pitch black. And sometimes one injects too much local anesthetic and it distorts the tissues, making it more difficult to close a laceration in the best cosmetic way. It's a fine line listening to the patients that always want more painkillers but also want a pretty result. And lastly, I once saw a kid with a runny nose the night before his parents had tickets to fly to Disney. Silly me, I examined his ears. Although no ear symptoms, he had a bright blue piece of plastic in his ear. Therefore, I felt obligated to get it out. Kid is not cooperative. Sedation, lack of success, multiple doctors tried. In this situation, we usually discharge to go to ENT clinic tomorrow, but they had morning plane tickets. I don't recall if they rescheduled their plane tickets or went to Disney with asymptomatic ear plastic, but after hours and hours fruitlessly messing around with me, I feel like I probably ruined their Disney trip either way. Story 17. Med student, so I was just there to observe. Elderly lady with dementia came in for an above-knee amputation. After cutting through her tissue to expose her femur, the surgeon started with the bone saw and within a few seconds started cursing and everyone around him seemed perplexed. Turns out the patient had a rod in her femur that the surgeon didn't know about. A few other surgeons came rushing in a few minutes later and they all figured it out eventually, with a mallet and lots of pounding. I had a lot of questions but was not in the right place to ask with all the tension in there. I guess it was a learning experience. Story 18. Not a surgeon or doctor, but I was the patient. When I was 7 to 9, somewhere in there, I had my first port put in. It's an IV catheter attached to the main vessels in the heart. When I woke up, I knew something was wrong. 
I have CF, so my lungs were horrible already, but this was way worse. I couldn't breathe and I was in so much pain. The doc thought I was just being a kid and not handling the pain very well. My nurse knew me pretty well and after me crying and struggling to breathe for a few hours, she convinced the doctor I didn't normally act like that and that something was wrong. He ordered an x-ray and we found out the surgeon had accidentally sliced my lung when putting the port in and my lung had collapsed. Ended up having a tube put in my chest. Story 19. When I was in school, I had an instructor who took a job as VP of patient care at a big American hospital. She said there was a patient who had been on the unit for a year and the hospital was footing the bill. When they told her why, it was just about the worst thing I've ever heard. He was in for brain surgery and they had removed the large section of his skull to access the brain. Then they dropped it on the floor. They tried to clean it up, and they apparently gave him lots of post-op antibiotics, but he inevitably developed encephalitis or meningitis. Or, well, probably infection of the whole head. Not necessarily the surgeon who dropped it. Story 20. Not a doctor, but a patient. I had a shoulder replacement, and one of the doctors nicked an artery. They were panicking to try and find the nick, doing everything, and when they saw it, it filled with blood. At some point, he got sight of it and jabbed at it with the clamps and finally got it. Problem was, there was a cluster of nerves directly behind the artery. So, after they fixed up the nick, they had to go through the process of checking if they damaged the nerves and if my fingers still worked. The doctor tells me he'll be telling that story to his students for years. Story 21. Not a surgeon, but my mom had to have a mastectomy on her left breast. They were getting her ready and came in saying, okay, so we're gonna remove the right one, and we are like, uh, no, the left. The nurse goes, oh, hold on, and cue 15 minutes of endless right, both left, and several different nurses coming through. Finally, the surgeon comes in and is like, left. The same surgeon told her the tubes they put in for drainage would be removed by the time she could go to work in a month. A resident came one day after the surgery, toward the end of the day, told her he was there to take the tubes out. She said no, the surgeon said it would be a month. He pressured her and took them out. These were stitched to hold them in place. The next day, she's in so much pain and her chest is swollen and hard. They call the surgeon and he comes in without the resident that had been following him around. He's like, what happened? He is mad. He drains her and is like, we have to get the fluid out and says to try it one way since they can't go back and insert the tubes. Christmas day, he's in his office draining my mom's wound, but he is telling her what else to try to help the drainage. He had this resident apologize and laid into him, then said next time if there's a question, everything stops till you hear from the doctor in charge. I also had a minor one. I was having a root canal and had sudden pain. Apparently, I had five roots instead of the standard four, and it was visible on one x-ray as a thickened root and another angle you could just barely see the five merged into four. Nothing major. More pain numbing and extra time, but he just shook his head and said weird. Not the first time a medical professional has said that to me. Story 22. Med student here. I was going to be watching a procedure of a 60-something-year-old lady get her pacemaker leads changed on a Monday. Well, right before the attending began the procedure, and she was still a little awake before the anesthesia was completely administered, she let everyone know that she had smoked drugs the day before, not weed. The procedure had to be postponed to Wednesday of that week to let the drugs get out of her system. Then, when the attending called the sister of the patient to let her know the results and any precautions they had to take, the sister asks the doctor if her sister could smoke again. Because the phone was on speaker, the entire room just facepalmed. Story 24. When I was in residency, my first solo procedure was a spinal surgery on a 16-year-old girl. At the end, after 13 hours, I was closing her up and I accidentally ripped her dural sac, shredded the base of the spine where all the nerves come together, membrane as thin as tissue. And so it ripped open and the nerves just spilled out of her like angel hair pasta, spinal fluid flowing out of her, and the terror was just so crazy, so real, and I knew I had to deal with it. So I just made a choice. I'd let the fear in, let it take over, let it do its thing, but only for five seconds. That was all I was going to give it. So I started to count one, two, three, four, five. Then it was gone. I went back to work, sewed her up, and she was fine. 